Hi, this is Nick from PrimeLoops.com. Today I'm going to tell you about the new Groove functionality that's been built into Ableton Live 8. Now in prior versions of Live, up here you had a number that represented the global groove amount. And what that really meant was that you were controlling the amount of swing or shuffle that was applying to any of the clips that had those settings enabled. The way you decided which clips had swing or shuffle was to come down here to this rudimentary groove section, where you had a fairly limited palette of different shuffle settings that you could apply to your clips thus adding a little bit more swing and human feel to them. Well, in Live 8, Ableton has added a far more comprehensive groove section, which now rivals all the other DAWs and more interesting hardware units out there as well. Now, a groove setting essentially consists of different points along a loop's timeline that represent where each of the hits that are nearest to those points will sit. So, for instance, if you have something with no groove applied, and it's just quantized to straight 16th notes, it will sound fairly robotic. By applying a groove to the clip, you're now instructing the different hits of audio or MIDI that exist in the clip to shuffle around either forward or backward from their hard quantized points. The end result, as I said before, is that you're adding more shuffle and human element to the audio. So let's take a closer look at the groove settings in Live 8. If you've upgraded to the latest version, you'll notice a new button right here with two wavy lines. That's the groove pool. If you click on it, it will display a variety of different settings for any of the clips you have loaded into the groove pool itself. Now the cool thing about this feature is that not only can you load up some predefined grooves out of Ableton Live 8's pretty impressive library, you can also extract the groove from your own audio clips or MIDI clips, putting it in the groove pool here, and then subsequently using it to apply to other clips that you might want to have a similar feel. Now to test out this functionality, I have three different loops loaded up from our dubstep drum loops collection. Let me just quickly scroll through them so you can get a feel for how they sound. Now each of these loops has an interesting shuffle or groove going on for it, so it might be fun to extract the grooves from some of these clips and apply them to others. So for instance, I might want to extract the groove from this old school 75 loop, and apply it down here to this Amistad 70 loop. And I can achieve that in one of two ways. Either I can drag the clip over here to the groove pool, or I can simply right click on it and go to extract grooves, which I'll do now. As I do that, it brings up a progress bar. And when it's done, it's extracted the groove using various warp markers inside of the clip. And that groove is now ready to be applied to other clips. So now that we have a groove loaded up in the pool here, I can apply it to this Amistad clip also in one of two ways. Either I can select the groove here and drag it over the clip, or if I'm looking at the Amistad clip's details down here, I can come down to the groove selector, click on the drop down, and as you can see, any grooves that are currently loaded into my groove pool will show up here in this drop down. So if I click on it here, it will now apply any of these groove settings to this clip here. Let me set it to none first. I'll play this clip back, and then in the middle of its playback, I'll apply the groove. Now there's a slight difference going on there, although it's very subtle. So if we want a more radical change to this loop, I can actually come up here and change some of the settings on this old school groove. And those settings will actually show up in real time on this audio clip down here. So first let's take a look at these parameters. The first and most important one is the global groove amount. This is exactly the same parameter that used to sit up here on this top bar. It's now been moved down here into the groove pool, which makes sense. Using this parameter, I can drag up or down and define how much I want any of the groove settings to apply to my clips in the set as a whole. So I might have multiple grooves loaded up here in the pool, all of which are applied to one or multiple clips, and yet this global groove amount will change each clip's application uniformly. So in that sense, it's a very simple parameter that will allow you to change the amount of shuffle or human feel of the entire track as a whole. The base setting determines at what note divisions this groove will actually apply. Quantize is a really helpful parameter and one that's not immediately obvious in terms of its function. What this does is actually apply quantizing to the clip before the groove is applied to it. So for instance, if you want the groove to have more of a predictable effect on your clip, what Quantize can do for you is actually move the individual hits around before the groove is applied to it. So if I set Quantize to 100% and we have bass set at 16th notes, 
What this groove will then do is go over our clip and nudge every single one of these hits to the nearest 16th note. Now the next parameter is timing, and what that does is determine how much this groove will actually apply to the clip. So if I bring that down to 0% and then bring quantize up to 100%, what this will do is go through the clip and for every hit the groove parameters will move that hit to the nearest 16th note, thus making the playback of this clip very rigid. Then as I bring the timing amount up, the groove will then apply its own timing settings to this perfectly quantized clip. Take a listen. The difference was subtle but important. I started out with quantize set to 100% and timing set to 0. This had the effect of kicking all of the hits in this clip over to the nearest 16th note. Then as I brought timing up, that heavily quantized clip then started to play back in a similar way to the clip where we extracted the groove. So I'll leave quantize and timing up at 100% so that now we're closely simulating the original clip where we extracted the groove. The next parameter is random, and what that will do is apply a somewhat randomized timing to each of the hits in your clip. If you set this to a low value, it can be a great way to simulate a human drummer, where the timing is never going to be perfect. Take a listen. As you could hear when I brought random up to high values around 100%, the randomness kind of got out of control and made the clip sound really sloppy. But this just goes to show that you have a lot of different range in which to play with these parameters. You can make a clip sound somewhat human and subtle, or you can make it sound completely chaotic if you want to. This last parameter is perhaps my favorite one. This allows you to actually apply the velocity sensitivity settings from the groove that you extracted to the new clip. At 0%, no velocity settings will be applied. If you drag this value above or below 0%, different hits will be emphasized while all the other hits are turned down in volume. Here's what that sounds like. So that about does it for the basic rundown of these different groove features. Taking all of these parameters together, you have ultimate control over all of the different shuffle and randomization that you'd want to apply to a drum track or even a melodic track. Now if you're happy with what the settings are doing to your drum clip, you can actually commit them. If you hit the commit button here, it'll actually set up warp markers that represent the new positions of playback for each of your hits. And these will actually correspond with the groove that you extracted from the original clip. Now since we made some changes to the velocity settings, there will also be volume differences here. Now you don't see those immediately because those are hidden away over here in the envelope section. If I click on the envelope selector here, you can see that the volume properties of the clip are selected and that the volume envelope corresponding to our velocity settings up here in the groove pool have been drawn in. And of course you can go back and adjust these to taste. So say I want to bring a few of these different hits up and I don't want them to be quite so low. I can just bring them up in volume. If I then later decide that I don't want to keep this groove on the clip and that I'd like to go back to the original settings, you can always just undo your work and go back to the original envelope. I'll just select none here and now we can play back the clip as it existed before we applied the groove. And also remember that all of this stuff I've just showed you applies equally well to MIDI clips. You can extract a groove from a MIDI clip as well as apply a groove to a MIDI clip. And again, you can create a whole collection of grooves over here that can be applied throughout your entire track. You can do that just by dragging these clips over here to the groove pool or just by right clicking on them here and going to extract grooves. And as you can see, each of these different grooves can have their own settings. And overall, their application to any of the loops in your set can be tempered using this global groove amount here. Now Ableton hasn't left you hanging without any predefined grooves to play with. If you want to access those groove presets, just come down here to the groove button on any clip that you want to apply it to. Say I choose Amistad, and just click on this button right here. And then it'll bring you up to the predefined grooves that are included with Ableton Live 8. So that does it for a basic rundown of the groove features in Ableton Live 8. I'll see you next time for more music production tips and tricks. Stay creative!